Okay, uh, no sooner did I say I was going to go off and do this work and turn the camera back on when I'm finished, then I realized that I shouldn't be worried about boring people with uh, details because you can fast forward through or skip entirely those uh, pieces of this this video set that are you're not interested in and uh, so since you're driving the bus when you're watching this stuff I don't need to worry so much about keeping it entertaining or flowing or what have you like that so with that in mind, I decided to uh, reorient the camera and actually get in on top of what I'm doing so you can see the, the actual technique of using these various tools. Now all that came to me after I had finished going over it and making the surface slightly uneven and wavy with this and then followed by the nose of this and then a little bit of this one so it kept getting a little smaller and now I'm down to the I, uh, no this isn't one of the tungsten carbide ones anyway uh, the nose of that is actually round and it's a really handy uh, shape for doing this kind of stuff so with no further ado, I'm going to just start doing this work. If you find it's boring, just click on the next segment and don't worry about it. Or I won't, <laughs> I won't care that you did, because I won't even know. Those of you who want to see this done, this is the next best thing that I can come up with of actually being here in my shop. So, here we go. Now something important is to frequently reorient the work so that you don't end up inadvertently creating a pattern because you're going to get into a, 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 a braced arc with your wrist moving a certain direction and you're going to put a pattern in there that you don't realize you're doing until after you've done it. And again, there's no putting wood back in this particular situation. so. And don't leave a single spot where the, the stain is gone from the, the line adjustment procedure. A flat topped sand blast bump stands out from 50 feet away. So even though there's only a tiny little patch of wood here, here's one I haven't gotten to yet, don't let it live, so to speak. Do something to break it up. Now I'm pushing pretty hard here and the slow speed guarantees that I, I have control even though I'm using a lot of pressure. And follow, if you happen to see a fan of grain lines like uh, growth rings or whatever it represents, go ahead and replicate what you see on the adjacent wood as much as reasonable. Now again, it's hard to uh, determine on film here or video, but I'm pushing surprisingly hard. This is not a gentle process. And exactly the way when you, on every other, whether you're making the stems or the, or the stumbles, Stop your cutting and uh, examine frequently. And the way you determine the what you're producing against a low contrast finish, uh, wood itself doesn't show contrast very well, here's what you do. Turn off your main illumination and get something like this going. 
Now it's not coming across very well for various photographic reasons, but use a low angle light to accentuate the texture. And that's how you can see what you're doing better than any other method. Actually, the work light itself, you can't see it from here, but if I hold it up vert with the light shining down the bowl, so to speak, so that it's like a 10 degree angle from this, you can use the, the work light itself without having to use an individual flashlight. So stop and check frequently. There's no going back. Okay, that, uh, I'm about ready to change to another bit, and then you're just going to see the same thing again. So I'm going to uh, finish out with the different cutting tips till I'm happy with the, uh, the, 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 the cutting result is as far as I can take it. And then I'll fire up the camera again to show the, uh, the high-speed little brushes doing their magic. So, why not? We're, it's all set up and there's no more. You know, all I have to do is push a button or not. So, might as well record this for those people who are interested in this level of observation and detail. So, I'm going to shut it off right now and uh, finish up with the diff all these little tiny sharp tips and stuff. And then uh, turn it back on when I'm ready to... Uh, do the brush thing. Already then. Okay, I have uh, removed as much wood as I think is appropriate to match the uh, original texture. And uh, you'll find that not only examining your work under a low angle light is helpful but you can actually work under those conditions, meaning arrange the lights in your shop when you're doing that procedure so that it's coming in at a steep angle and it helps you know where to go and how long to linger there with the different tools. So it doesn't look all that much different, right? Well, it's not, but it is. This is about an inch by a quarter of an inch thick by half an inch wide pile of briar dust or chips actually chips and dust that that came off or out of the surface of this and that's significant that's I'd say that's about a half a teaspoon which by anybody's measure is a fair amount of wood and uh, we have a little bit more to go, 
and that is using the magic spinner and I've set the machine so that it will rotate in a counterclockwise direction and blow the dust away from me and because this is so nasty when it gets revved up in terms of uh, shooting stuff in the air normally I don't uh, I'll shut off the uh, uh, dust collector when trying to do make these videos in this case no can do I'm gonna uh, turn it on while revving this thing up and uh, will not be able to talk over it I'm afraid it's gonna be pretty loud my apologies in advance but it's the only way you'll get to see it actually done in uh, real time so to speak so here comes the noise Okay, I'm not finished yet, <clears throat> but enough is enough. It's Nothing's going to change for the next few minutes other than I'm going to continue to... You notice that I was constantly moving the work around so that there's no uh, single direction that the cutting action is occurring. And uh, once I've reached the right point, what it looks to be right to me just from experience with this which is uh, 80 I don't know whether that corresponds to a true 80 grit piece of sandpaper or not but it doesn't matter the 3M people uh, have numbered their little wheels from 80 through uh, 1 micron which is polishes of course so there's 80, 120, 220, 400, 800, 6 micron 1 micron so uh, these little guys do add up. They're not dirt cheap. It's mostly that you end up using five of them of each of the varieties and make them up in these uh, pre-made little stacks. And by the time you've got a full setup of those and you've bought the little fishing tackle box with all the grits in it, it's probably around 100 bucks. Uh, you need these, a little anvil for each one. So anyway... Uh, do not think that you can approximate to a, f uh, a, a, a convincing degree a sandblast with cutting tools alone. The finish left by the tool is enough different from that left by uh, bl blasting media that when you finish it and stain it, you can tell the difference if you know what you're looking for. If you use these little brushes, you can't. It's the only thing I... There may be other ways to do it. I don't know of them. And resist the urge to use a brush. I don't care if it's brass or stainless steel or nylon or whatever. They will channel. And you'll end up with a, a rusticated finish. It's going to be a textured pipe. But it's not going to look like a proper sandblast. And the name of the game here is ultimately to have somebody look at this and decide that, man, they didn't make very good pipes. Dunhill didn't make very good pipes in the middle 70s, but here's one that somehow got out 
looking great. So we want it to be convincing. Alrighty then, I'm going to uh, finish uh, shining, or not shining, uh, uh, brushing this stumble, and then uh, come back and I'll wrap it up with uh, uh, how to color it and uh, shine up the stem. She'll be cooked. Alrighty then.